Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I am back. Look, this is like three videos in a row. Crazy. It's like I'm on a schedule or something. If you are new to this channel, hi, hello, how are you? Um, I am here to bring you one of my favorite, I think this is one of my favorite patterns. I think it's gonna be up there with the loaf cat, with the lazy daisy. Um, so I hope you guys like it as well. But I am here to give you this little kiwi pattern. Um, obviously I've made it in a chunky version and then I've made it in a normal version. I'm gonna be teaching you how to do this version. You can definitely size up the yarn and this is not much different. I'll put the comments on what's different with the chunky version below. Basically it's just around the beak. I just added one more, one more round to make this. So easy peasy. Before we get into the pattern, um, this is I think a beginner pattern. Like I think this is like, newer beginner pattern so like you kind of know how to single crochet you kind of know how to do all the, like all the stitches like th this is a pretty beginner pattern and I really try and break it down into like what I'm doing of course you can find the pattern below in the description I've also uploaded it on Ribbler so if you prefer to get it there I have my Ribbler link in the description as well um, so literally however you like this you can use this pattern to make your own little kiwi or your own chunky kiwi and you are more than welcome to sell the products that you make from this pattern please don't replicate the pattern or try and sell the pattern this pattern is free and will always be free so um, please do not steal this pattern <laughs> um, but you are more than welcome to use this pattern to make products to sell on your Etsy store to sell in markets or whatever so for this chunky version I used a size 7 yarn so I used chenille home in terracotta and then I used a size 6 yarn um, in chenille home home slim so it's just like the smaller version and I think I used what was this what was this color seed pearl for this color and then the two hooks that I used for the chunky version were an 8.0 millimeter hook and a 6.0 millimeter hook so obviously the bigger hook goes with the bigger yarn and the smaller hook goes with the smaller yarn and then for the eyes for this I used 15 millimeter safety eyes I didn't use the backings I just tend to glue them in um, you're more than welcome to use the backings I tend to just glue things in now because it just makes it easier to see where things end up going but up to you you can use the backings if you want the other thing about this pattern is that I am using a different version of the single crochet so I'm using the yarn under version of the single crochet I do have a video about yarn under versus yarn over um, if you prefer to use yarn over single crochet that's totally fine the pattern will still work out things might just be a little bit bigger um, the yarn under tends to be a little bit tighter of a, of a stitch so I would definitely recommend trying to learn the yarn under single crochet if you can um, because because I prefer it and it kind of makes the stitches a little bit neater. This pattern also is worked in continuous rounds and uses US terms, um, so no UK terms here. <laughs> So if you do end up making this pattern, I would love to see it. So make sure you tag me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, wherever wherever you are. The only place that I'm not on is Facebook. So, so uh, just tag me at False Bubbles. Okay, so let's start with materials and then we'll get right into the pattern. Okay, so like always, yarn first. So we are using two different kinds of yarn today. So uh, this first one, which is the base of our piece, we are using Paintbox Simply Erin in a size four yarn, and this is acrylic, and we are using color 209, which is soft fudge. And then we are using Paintbox Simply DK, and this is a size three yarn acrylic, and it is in color 108, which is light, light caramel, I think, light caramel. Um, so these are the two yarns that we're using today. The reason why we're using two different yarns is because we're doing the body with this, with the bigger yarn, so it works up nice and quick. And then we're doing the details with the smaller yarn, which allows us to have a little bit more control over um, how the shape works. 
So now for our tools and accessories and all that jazz, we are gonna start off with hooks. So I have a 3.0 millimeter hook, which we'll be, we'll be using with the size four yarn. And then I have a 2.0 millimeter hook, which we'll be using with the size three yarn. And then a couple of bits and bobs. We have our yarn needle or darning needle. I have a small one because I like to use the small one. I have a stitch marker. I have six millimeter safety eyes. You can use their backings along with the with the eyes, but I have been liking using just like fabric glue. I find that it stays in quite well, but it's up to you. You can use the backings if you want. And then I have a little bit of white scrap yarn that we're gonna use for the details of the, the eyes here. This is a size four yarn, and it's just like some random scrap pieces that I have left over from a, uh, a ball of yarn. So that's that. And then we will need some polyester fiber fill stuffing. Um, I'm not sure, that's probably a, a, a good estimation for how much we'll need. I like to stuff my my pieces pretty well so um, it's up to you how how tightly um, you want to stuff the looser it is the squishier uh, your little kiwi bird will be and then the the tighter it is the more it will have like uh, the more stiff it will be okay so let's grab our soft fudge yarn the darker color and I'm gonna just grab that center pull and I am actually going to zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so here we are. We are gonna start off with a magic circle. So if you are using chunky yarn or velvety yarn, I would recommend that you start off with a chain two and single crochet and second chain from hook method. But for all of my like standard size four, size three, smaller yarns, I will always go for a magic circle. So the way that I do my magic circle, and again, I really have to like figure, <laughs> I have film this so I can just like reference that instead of, you know, doing this, doing this tutorial every single time. The way that I do my magic circles is by wrapping around my finger and then putting my crochet hook underneath that loop in between my fingers, pulling up the loop. Oh my God. Okay, that's embarrassing. Anyways, underneath here, pulling up the yarn that comes from your ball of yarn, just like that. And then I grab it with these two fingers over here and like cinch it in and then we'll yarn over and pull through that loop so that creates our little anchoring stitch and now we can start to put our magic circle stitches in so it'll have like this little overlapping like almost like braided piece here which you want you want that to look like that so now that we have our base we are going to create a magic circle of six so i'm just going to start putting six single crochets into this loop and this will be our magic circle of six. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'll just check one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm gonna take this piece of yarn and pull it tight. So this will close up that little hole there. And now I'm gonna put my stitch marker on my last stitch so I know that that is my last stitch. Now that we have our magic circle of six, we're gonna move on to round one. And round one, we are gonna start by just increasing into every single stitch. So an increase is just two single crochets into the stitch to like double up on the amount of stitches. So we're gonna increase into every single stitch. So we have six stitches here and we are going to double it. So we'll have 12 at the end of the round. So I'm gonna start going into this one. This is my first stitch here and we are going to single crochet. Maybe if I can pull through, <laughs> if I can pull through. So then make sure you go into the same stitch to increase. And then there's your, your increase. And we're gonna do that same two single crochet into one stitch each all the way around. So six times total. And then at the end, we will have a 12 stitches. So this is my last one. Okay, so now we can count and we can see if we have 12. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I'm gonna put my stitch marker back on to indicate my last stitch there. And now for round two, we are going to single crochet and then increase. So we're gonna do it over a combination of two stitches and we are going to single crochet in the first one and then increase into the next one. And that combination, we're gonna do six times around. So because we were increasing in that combination of like two stitches, six times, we are adding six stitches. So 12 plus six equals 18. We should have 18 at the end of the round. So single crochet and then increase. And then you're gonna do that combination all the way around. So single crochet and then increase. Single crochet and then increase. single crochet and then increase single crochet and then increase yeah pull some more yarn here and then our last set single crochet and then increase so just a little hot tip um, if you end off on the correct stitch you're usually good with the amount of stitches that you have, but if you're a beginner and you're still recognizing the stitches and how they look, I would just recommend counting after every single round. But usually if you end off on an increase and you're supposed to end off on an increase, I'd trust it, but um, you might as well just count uh, just to make sure. Now we are on round three and we are going to just single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So we have 18 stitches here, and at the end of round three, we should have 18 stitches because we're just putting one single crochet into every single stitch. There we go. So now that was round three. For round four, we're gonna do the exact same thing. 18 single crochets all the way around. Okay, last one here. Okay, so round four is now complete. We're gonna move on to round five, and this is where we're gonna start getting a little bit wild and wacky. So let's start with single crochet five and then increase. We are gonna do that three times around. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five and then in the sixth stitch we are going to increase we're going to put two single crochets into one and then we're going to do that again so one two three four five and then in the sixth we're going to increase and then we're going to do that again one two three, four, five, and then in the last stitch, we are going to increase. There we go. Okay, so you can see that it's starting to round. If your piece looks like this with the yarn coming out uh, the top, just invert it so that it is like this, so your yarn is coming out the middle. Okay, so I'm putting that stitch marker back on. Okay, so at the end of round five, we should have 21 stitches because we did that combination of single crochet five and then increase. We did that three times, so that would include three increases and therefore we should have 21 stitches. So moving on to round six, we are going to increase into the first stitch and then we're going to increase into the second stitch. And then we are going to single crochet the rest around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, ten. 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so since we did two increases in that round and we had 21 stitches, 21 plus 2 equals 23. So we should have 23 stitches at the end of that round. So this is where you're going to have to bear with me and just kind of go through the rounds following the instructions because we just need to start shaping the piece so that this side is more flat and this side starts like bowing out a little bit. So you can see that it's got like a little, little dip here and then this side is more so flat. So for round seven, we are going to single crochet two, one, two, and then we are going to single crochet six and then increase. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we are going to increase. Okay, so increase into the seventh. And then we're gonna do that little small pattern again of single crochet six and then increase. We're gonna do that again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then increase. And then we're gonna do that pattern again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then increase into the last stitch. So you're like, why the heck are you doing it like that? That sounds so weird. It's just because I'm trying to make it as like easy to understand as possible. So those two uh, single crochets at the beginning, I'm trying to like, because we're starting to tilt off towards the right here, you can see that our stitches start kind of veering towards the right. I'm trying to line up where those single crochets land every single time. So I give it a buffer of two stitches, our increase, previous increase stitches are here. So I'm starting, I'm trying to like accommodate for that. So I'm adding those two stitches because we added two stitches and then I'm making it, trying to make it easy to understand by telling you to do single crochet six increase three times. So we'll do single crochet two and then we'll do single crochet six increase, single crochet six increase, single crochet six increase. And so when you're writing the pattern and when you're reading the pattern, it makes it a little bit easier to understand because there's not like a whole bunch of words and letters and number combinations thrown at you. You literally have it in brackets and you can just read the bracket and repeat the bracket. Okay. So we should have 26 stitches at the end of this round. So at the end of round seven, 26 stitches. Now moving on to round eight, we are, are still gonna try and line up these increases so we can shape it properly. So we are going to single crochet and then we're gonna increase. And then we're gonna do that pattern again. And then we're gonna, so single crochet and then increase. Okay, so now we've increased twice, so we'll have two additional stitches, and we're going to single crochet the rest all the way around. So at the end of this round, because we had 26 stitches in the last round and we increased by two, we should have 28 at the end of this round. So now you can see that we're starting to like create this little shape of like, we're going out this way. I'm not sure if you can tell, but we're kind of moving more to out, out this side here. Okay, so round nine, we are gonna start off with a single crochet, and then to make it easy to understand, just so the math adds up, we are going to single crochet eight and then increase, so in, in, increase into the ninth, and we're gonna do that pattern three times around, not the single crochet to start. We're gonna do single crochet eight and then increase three times around. 
So that first set, you'll actually single crochet nine, but we're just gonna ignore that first one just to make it like easier to understand. Start off with the single crochet one and then start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then increase into the ninth. We're gonna go again. So we're gonna do single crochet eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then, ooh, eight. And then we're going to single, or we're gonna increase into the ninth. And then we're gonna do that one more time. So we would have done that pattern three times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then increase into the ninth. So after this round, this was round nine, we should have 31 stitches. Okay, moving on to round 10. We are gonna start by single crocheting three. So one, two, three. And then we're gonna increase. And then we are gonna single crochet. And then we are going to increase. And then we're gonna single crochet the rest. Okay, so the reason why I did that is because I needed to shift, like shift where those increases are lining up. So all of my increases are like around here. You can kind of see them popping out here and I'm trying to line them up as best as I can. Because if I started with the increase, my increase would be all the way over here. But I need to line them up and even them out. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead with the rest of round 10. I am going to single crochet the rest. 25. Okay, so at the end of round 10, you should have 33 stitches because we had 31 in the last round. We added two increases on this round, so we should have 33. So now round 11 is going to be easy peasy. You've gotten so far um, with my random numbers and letters thrown at you, but this one's going to be easy. We're going to do a combination of um, like three, but we're going to do single crochet 10 and then increase into the 11. And we're going to do that three times around. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna increase into the 11th. We're gonna do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, 10 and then increase into the 11th. Okay, doke. And last time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and increase into the 11th. So by the end of this round, we added three increases and therefore we have 36 stitches at the end. Okay, this is where it's like smooth sailing for the rest of the way. You see our, our cute little shaping that we got? We're, we're gonna start working on the butt. So for the next two rounds, so for round 12 and 13, we are just gonna single crochet 36 each time. So I'm not gonna make you watch these two rounds. I'm just gonna come back after I've done the two rounds of single crocheting 36 each, all right? Okay, give it a pause here and I will meet you back when I'm done. 
Okay, so I have just finished up rounds 12 and 13. I still have 36 stitches. We haven't added anything. And now we're going to start our decreasing. So the decreasing is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, so for round 14, we are going to single crochet four. So one, two, three, and four. And then we are going to invisible decrease the next two stitches together. To do that, we are going to pick up the front loops only of the next two stitches. So if you don't know front loop and back loop, this stitch is made up of two loops. A front loop, which sits here, and a back loop, which sits here. And normally we go through both when we crochet. However, for this special decrease stitch, we are going to pick up the front loop only of the next two stitches. So it should look like that. And then we're gonna yarn under, pull up a loop, yarn under, pull through both. Okay? So we've done single crochet four and then invisible decrease. So that is a combination over six stitches, if that makes sense, because we did single crochet four and then the two stitches come together uh, to form the fifth stitch. So five and six come to together to form the fifth. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes my brain is weird the way that, that it thinks about things. So we're gonna do that again one, two, three, four single crochets, and then invisible decrease, invisible decrease. So that is that pattern, single crochet four, invisible decrease, and we're gonna do that six times around total. Do it again, one, two, three, four, and invisible decrease. And we're gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, an invisible decrease. And again, one, two, three, four, and then invisible decrease. And last time, one, two, three, and four and the last two stitches of the round will be your invisible decrease okay so that was round 14 and we should have 30 stitches at the end because we had 36 we decreased by six so now we should have 30. so now for round 15 we're going to do something similar except Last time we did single crochet four invisible decrease and now we're going to do single crochet three and then invisible decrease and we're going to do that six times around. So we'll decrease by six total. So one, two, three single crochets and then we are going to invisible decrease the next two stitches together. We're going to do it again. One, two, three and then invisible decrease the next two stitches together and again one two three and then invisible decrease the next two stitches together and again one two three and then invisible decrease and again one two three and invisible decrease and last time one two and three and then invisible decrease okay so we decreased by six so now we should have 24 stitches at the end of this round so moving on to round 16, we're gonna do something similar again, but instead of doing single crochet three and invisible decrease, we're gonna do single crochet two and invisible decrease. So one, two single crochets, and then invisible decrease. We're gonna do that again. One, two, 
an invisible decrease. So we're doing this six times around total. So that was two times. And we're going on to the third one. One, two, and invisible decrease. And we're gonna do it again. One, two, two and invisible decrease. We're gonna do it again. One, two, and invisible decrease. And our sixth and final time. One, two, and invisible decrease. Okay. So now we should have 18 stitches at the end of this round. I don't know if you can tell, but we are working in, um, what are they called? Multiples. <laughs> oh my God. We're working in multiples of six, um, which is like very common for amigurumi. So it's like multiples of four, multiples of six, multiples of eight. They're super common because they're easy to work with and they're easy to predict. Um, so anyways, moving on to round 17, instead of doing single crochet two and invisible decrease, we're gonna do single crochet one and invisible decrease. So single crochet one and then invisible decrease. Single crochet one and invisible decrease. We're doing this six times, same thing as last time. Single crochet one, invisible decrease. Single crochet one, invisible decrease. Single crochet one, invisible decrease. And the last time, single crochet one, and invisible decrease. Okay. So after the end of round 17, you should have 12 stitches left. Very manageable. And we are gonna pull out our crochet hook and leave like a little, a, a large loop, just so it doesn't come undone. And we are going to now stuff this piece, stuff our little burb. I'm just gonna start by stuffing the very highest point. And I should mention that if you are using the backings, now is a great time to put it in before you put the stuffing in. And you just wanna make sure that your eyes are facing forward. <laughs> Does that make sense? So this is obviously the butt, and then this is the front of the face. So I did the eyes between rounds four and five. So you can count from here, one, two, three, four and five. And then I did them three holes apart. So one, two, which is sitting in the middle here and three. So if you were to like count it out, you would put your safety eye in hole number one and then two, three, four will be empty and five will have the other eye. So it's kind of difficult to see um, when it's not stuffed, which that's why I like to put it in at the end and use glue. But you can go, you're gonna find your butt, which is like your most rounded part here. And then we are going to just kind of follow this way and this is gonna be the front of our piece. So you can count down. This is our magic circle. One, two, three, four, and five. So in between uh, rounds four and five. And then you're gonna do them uh, three holes apart. So where are my little eyes? So I need to count that again. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then three apart. So this might take a little bit of like motion around and seeing where you like it. So one, two, three. That looks about right it looks kind of silly right now then you can put your your snoot your beak right in the middle and the reason why it looks so funny too is because of these whites i feel like the whites of the eyes really add a lot of character so this just looks kind of like a potato <laughs> or a slug at the same time. But anyways, I do recommend, especially if you're a beginner, to glue them in at the end. Once everything is stuffed, you can really like see how it kind of fits together. So would recommend that you put these in at the end. 
And now we are gonna take this opportunity to stuff the piece. I like to make sure that I stuff the head nice and firmly first, and then I will go along and stuff the rest. And I kind of just try and spread it out as evenly as possible. I'll squish, squish the piece here and there, but you want to try and get that little bird-like shape. I don't know, is that, is that a good description? Bird-like shape? So I'll try and, and stuff the outsides first to make like a good base for it to sit on. And then I will stuff the middle. So I'm just trying to like fill out and round out the sides. And this is like a good opportunity to like really make that, that body like flush out. Okay. And I think we are good after this piece here. So try not to stuff with too much stuffing coming out because that will start to get into your final single crochets and then it just won't, it won't look as great. So I'm going to make sure that we have enough stuffing in here, mush around a little bit, make sure we look, we look nice. And I'm just gonna compare against my other one. And I think that's pretty accurate. I think uh, I think that works well. Perfect. Kinda looks like a chicken nugget, but it's, it's a kiwi bird, I can confirm. So now we should be on our last round. And our last round will just be invisible decreasing every set of two together. So we had 12 at the beginning of this round. We will invisible decrease six times and then we'll have six remaining. So one, two, three, oop, four, five, Ugh. gets a little bit tight at the end and last one is six Ooh. okay so i just pulled out that loop a little bit and then i'm gonna grab some scissors and we really don't need too much um we're just gonna pull that out there okay i'm gonna take my needle my yarn needle and we're gonna finish this bad boy off if you find that you need a little bit more stuffing grab some and just use like the back of a crochet hook or a chopstick or wooden dowel or whatever to kind of push that stuffing in so to finish off we are going to use our yarn needle to pick up the front loop only of the remaining six stitches and pull them tight one Two. I like to pull off to the side because it lets me know which one's the next one. Three. See, I like to pull that. So I know this like nice and tight one I've already I've already gone into, so I know it's I know it's this one. Four. Five. And last one, six. And then we can give a nice tug there. And then we're gonna push our our needle into that that little opening there and like out the side or the top or whatever if you want your little kiwi bird to have a butt it's possible okay the, the way that we make butts is literally by like using this yarn and coming out up here instead so coming out like kind of that butt side um, so mine's over here, but if I were to come up here instead, we would just like essentially try and make this nice and tight um, to give like a little butt shape. Make sense? And then you just tie it off and like make a knot with it like tied really tight. So, but I'm not going to give my kiwi bird a butt. The butt is for another day. I'm just going to trim the excess and then to make this pop in, we're just going to give them a little squish. Okay, so now let's finish crocheting and then we can start assembly. So this is, we've got our little potato shape, but we are going to take our other yarn, our smaller size three yarn, and we are gonna take our smaller hook too. And this is the 2.0 millimeter hook. I had it upside down. 
2.0 millimeter hook with our size three yarn. And we are gonna start with the feet. So we're gonna make two feet. So do this pattern twice um, to make matching feet. If you are taking a break, take a break before or after the feet. Try and crochet the feet at, in the same sitting just because they'll turn out more alike. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail here and make a slip knot with my fingers and then put it onto the hook. Okay, so we are gonna start by chaining four. So one, two, three, four. So there's our chain of four. You can see all of the V's as they look like little braids. Now starting in the second chain from the hook, right in this one, we are going to slip stitch. One. Now this is very hard to see because it's so small now. And then in the next one, we are also going to slip stitch. And then in the last one, we are also going to slip stitch. So we did a chain of four and then starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to slip stitch three. So three all the way back down. So we should have something like this. Now we are going to chain four again. One, two, three, four. And we are going to slip stitch three back down. So starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch three. This first one's always like a menace. One, and then in the next one, we're gonna slip stitch again, two, and then in the next one, we're gonna slip stitch again, three. So now you have something like this. And now we're gonna do that again. So we're gonna chain four, one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna slip stitch all the way back down. So starting in the second chain from the hook, you're gonna slip stitch, one and then again slip stitch into the next one two and then slip stitch into the last one here three okay so now you have something like this but we kind of like that doesn't really look like a foot yet we kind of need to like bring them together so you know how like if you're familiar with you know doing blankets or even doing i guess clothes you can make like a border going down like to to fix up your edges so we're gonna do something similar with that with with like oh is there a fly we're gonna do something similar and we are going to essentially find the middle little toe and then we are going to try and like go somewhere like it doesn't really matter i'm just gonna like go put my hook into that that loop right there and then i'm going to yarn under my hook because i'm doing the yarn under method and then pull up that loop okay and then without doing it don't like don't pull it off don't pull through two just leave those two on there find that first toe that you made and we're gonna go underneath in the same way that we did with the second toe we're gonna go underneath and then yarn under and pull up a loop so there should be three loops on your hook now and then we are going to yarn under our hook or over like it just depends on what kind of method you're doing so yarn over under and then we're going to take that and pull through all three so this will kind of bring us together and make it more of like a a bird foot does that make sense? So I guess it's like technically like um, like a single crochet two together kind of situation, if you know that, but I don't know, just kind of easier to explain in that way. So I've just pulled up a little bit of a loop and then I'm gonna just leave a little bit of a tail for sewing in. So we need to make sure that when we are sewing it in, we keep in, in mind that this one's looser than this one. This is the one that had the slip knot, so it's already kind of knotted off. So when we when we are um, sewing in, just keep in mind that we're gonna use this one. We're gonna use the one that's like not a slip knot because you can see it's kind of like it'll loosen up if we're not if we're not super careful. 
So we are just gonna keep an eye on this guy. You're gonna go ahead and make a second one to match and I am going to follow your lead, I guess, and make a second one to match. So pause here and I'll meet you back uh, when I've done the second foot. Okay, dog. So I have finished finished up my matching foot. Um, so now I have two. So we are going to just take these and put them off to the side for now for sewing in later. And we are going to grab that same yarn uh, that we just used, that smaller yarn, size three yarn. And we are going to make the beak now. So the beak is a little bit tricky because we're not using a lot of stitches. So we are going to start off with our magic circle. And this time we are going to do a magic circle of four. So in this loop, we are going to put four single crochets. So one, two, three. Oops, I almost split that. No, I still did split that. So three and four. <clears throat> so We've got four stitches here. Normally we would put six or eight or something, so it will close off the circle quite well, but we're only doing four here. So we are going to close this up nice and tight. And you can see that it like almost makes a semicircle and not a full circle. So we need to stretch our yarn quite far to get into this first single crochet. So we are gonna start by single crocheting four so one in, into each stitch. So that's the first single crochet there. And then you need to find your second one, which is right next door. Once, oh, see, I'm splitting my stitches too. There's one single crochet there. And then uh, this is single crochet three. And then the last one will be our fourth single crochet. So this is where you want to make sure that you are on the right side of your crochet. So if your yarn is coming out um, this side, just try and invert the piece. We are working very small here. So you want to do that quickly because we're doing like a narrow piece. So I'm going to put my stitch marker on the last stitch there. And you're going to go and find your first single crochet. So remember how that first stitch was a stretch? You don't want to confuse where your stitch is. So you can see our single crochet is coming out of this one here. You can see a little piece coming off. So the next one over is this one. Okay. It's hard to see because we're working so small. So into this first single crochet, we are going to do an increase. So two single crochets into the one stitch, okay? And then we are going to single crochet the rest. So we'll do the remaining three stitches will be single crochet. So we'll increase and then single crochet, single crochet, single crochet. So our last stitch here, it's going to be single crochet. So we increase by one from our set of four stitches and we should have five at the end of this round. So just go ahead and check that and make sure that you have five stitches. Okay, so now we are going to just single crochet five. So single crochet all the way around. So one, two, try not to crochet too tight, three, Four. And last one is five. Okay, so we are moving on to, which round are we on? I didn't even label them. Um, one, two, three, four. So we are on round four and we are going to start off with an increase. So we're gonna find that first stitch Remember, we're working so small, so find where that there's no yarn coming out of. So you can see that this one has yarn coming out of it, but this hole does not. So we're gonna go into that one and we are going to start by an increase. And then we are going to single crochet five. Nope, not five. We're gonna single crochet four. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
to oops two three and last one is four so we should have six stitches at the end of this round So now we're going to go on to round, what are we on? Round five? <laughs> it's so silly. I didn't label them on my pattern. One, two, three, four, five. Round five and round six are just going to be straight single crochet all the way around. So we have six stitches um, right now and we are going to single crochet six and then single crochet six again. Okay. So I'm going to go around and single crochet those and I will meet you back once I am done. Okay, so we just finished off the two rounds of single crocheting six a piece and we have something that looks like this. So if you are going and using like a chunkier yarn, this might not, this is the only part that doesn't quite translate, I find, with the smaller yarn to the bigger yarn. So if you're using like a size six yarn or something like that, I would go ahead and put another round or two of single crochet just to make it a little bit longer just like the chunkiness just doesn't quite stretch the same way so um, do another round of single crocheting six if you are working with chunkier yarn so I'm going to pull up that loop and I am going to trim right here just enough just enough to sew in and then you have like two pieces of yarn here so one is from your starting and then one you just trimmed so I find that if I <laughs> I don't know I try and find like easy ways to get rid of my yarn but I want this to be slightly stuffed but it's like impossible to stuff right now so I fold the yarn in half and then I spin it <laughs> I spin it and then I try and take the back of my darning needle and like <laughs> push it in the piece so it has like something to grip onto and I just kind of stuff it in there I don't know it works I'm not <laughs> I don't know it does work so there's our little beak so now we should have all of our pieces we've got our like potato we've got our our two feet and then we have our little beak so we kind of already worked on this but we are going to find the butt of our piece and then find the front of our piece so it's kind of like you can you can tell where where your increases kind of lie but sometimes just the butt lands a little bit differently depending on your tensions and, and stuff like that so we're going to find the front of our piece wherever we we think that should be and then we're going to count down one two three four and five and then i'm going to i'm just going to place place the eyeballs in for now and then we can move it as necessary so i put it in that one and then i go over one two three and then i'm gonna put it into that fourth there you go okay so that is about where i put the other one and then we can try and see how our little beak will look here so we're gonna try and put the beak in the middle and in the middle so in the middle two ways so horizontally we have it in the middle and vertically we have it in the middle so it's gonna sit spot on center and then as you can see I'm holding this yarn tail near the bottom left so I find that if I have it kind of positioned a little bit bottom like bottom left I can position it a little bit better if you want to go ahead and just sew it in right there you can this is like small enough that it's not really gonna move too far on you but if you are a little bit nervy worthy you can put in a little needle maybe two just to kind of hold it into place as you uh, as you sew around so I'm just gonna pop those in and grab my needle 
and we're not gonna we're gonna try and like not pull this yarn too far we're gonna try and just like wherever it wants to sit we are gonna try and just pick up the stitches and so each of the six stitches from the beak into the piece we're trying not to pull too far because we don't want the beak to land too far down we don't want to pull it too far over to the right or to the to the left so just like where it naturally wants to to sit and then we can pull out our little helpful needles along the way so i'm going from the inside of the piece out and then pull it that way and then i go back into the same spot and out a neighboring stitch and then underneath and out and you can see i'm on so this is the the round that we have our or the in between rounds <laughs> that we have the eye in and then i'm actually stitching in the top of the beak um on the in between round above and the in between round below okay so that should center our beak Mm. Try to make sure that you're only putting, you're sewing each stitch down and you're not like doubling up on it. So I've got two stitches left. And last one here. So this one's a little bit of a looser stitch. That's totally fine. And then I am going to put my needle into the piece right where we came back out of I go across so that that one is nice and tucked in and then I'll find a stitch that I like sewed down and I will knot that in just like that and then you can kind of pull it nice and tight and then to get rid of that little knot from showing uh, I just kind of stick it back back through and out the other side here and tug it in. So now you can't really see that knot. Now we can use our scissors again and trim that. So I think we are looking pretty good. You can give your kiwi a little mush to make sure that it is centered. Like all is not lost if you've put it off to the side a little bit too much. Don't worry about it. Just kind of mush them into the right shape. So we have our beak on and now we are going to put our feet on and then we are going to finish off the eyes and glue the eyes in. So I am going to just leave my feet a little bit floppy. You can sew them completely down on the body if you want, but I like to have him a little bit tilted and like, I'm not sure if you can see, we don't have these um, feet like flat on this bottom part. I like to have it so that he's like, he's gonna be slightly like tilted forward. So hard for me to show you, but so that his butt's up in the air. So I'll like tilt, I'll tilt this forward a little bit and kind of see where that flat part is by pushing on the, the table. And then I'm gonna just kind of line it up with the eyeballs and we can use some pins to like position those and I'm gonna, Try and sew them in on the same in-between round um, as each other so that they're lined up. Go like this. Uh, we might have to move over just a touch. I think that's good. So now remember what I said about finding the um, the correct yarn to sew in. So you can see that like when I spread this out it starts to loosen up so i know that this one is the one that i want to use we don't want to use the slip knot one to sew in because i want to make sure that this one is very secure but i mean it's not again like not the end of the world like don't don't panic about using the right one and i'm just going to go into into the piece and out the other side just next door and then I'm going to go into the other side. So our yarn was attached to this side, right? I'm going to go into this area right here. 
and try not to get rid of your loop entirely because we are going to use that loop to knot. And then we are going to push the yarn through and then that will be secure. So we don't have to knot this one in because it's already a slip knot. We can just hide it through the piece. So I'm going to go find a area where it's not going to be showing and then I'm going to hide it through the piece. So if you want, you can trim these yarn tails as you go. However, I have found that I like to trim them both at the end once I've like confirmed their spots because sometimes um, I like the placement of one, but not the other. So I have to pull one out. And once you've trimmed the excess, uh, you don't really have much yarn to sew in later. So just a little helpful, helpful tip from Bubbles here. So I'm going to put the next one in. So just make sure that you're lined up with the same in between row. And then I'm just going to pull that yarn a little bit more here. Take out that pin. And then on this side, I'm going to make that knot. And then nice and tight all the way down. It should like kind of clip into place and then out the other side. And then we are going to just hide the yarn that's coming from that slip knot and somewhere in here. Okay. And just to confirm that we have these guys in the right place, we're going to sit our little kiwi bird up and make sure that he stands up okay and see if we need to move anything before we trim off the excess. I think we're I think we're good because the way that he'll sit is kind of like a little bit leaning forward and you can kind of push him into that position. So I'm going to just trim the excess. And you can use these scraps for stuffing another time. And now we are just going to finish off the eyes. So I have somehow gotten into this habit of using glue and then adding the whites of the of the eyes around. I feel like I can like put <laughs> my rationale as ridiculous as it may be is that the glue will touch the <laughs> the whites as I put it in. I don't actually I don't know. I'm thinking about it now and it doesn't really make sense but I feel like I want to like, <laughs> anyways, I'm going to glue the eyeballs in and then sew in the whites, but I'm thinking now that you can probably do it the other way, but out of habit, I'm going to stick to what I know. I have my handy dandy glue. Just make sure it gets to the bottom. Okay, and we have these eyeballs in, so when we take them out, it'll be left with like a little spot where you can see where you've gone. So I'm gonna go and put a little dab of glue there. And then I'm also going to put, I don't know why, but I feel like it makes me feel better if I put a little dab of glue on the safety eye as well. And then trying not to touch the glue, we're gonna put that bugger right back in. And then because this uh, dries clear, it's usually pretty, uh, pretty good at blending in, but try not to put like too much of a bead of glue. Um, if you want, you can just put a bead of glue here. It's probably going to be fine to be honest, just to put a little, a little bead right there and then throwing that in. And then just making sure that you've lined it up properly before uh, it dries too much because I feel like you can kind of just pull it out a little bit if, if so requires. But now we are gonna work on adding the little uh, details. So I'm gonna take some scrap white yarn. You don't really need much. I always grab too much. Like this is, this is too much, but I like grabbing a little extra just in case. I'm gonna start by putting it in on this side, the whites on that side. So I'm gonna go in through here and then come out like a very similar spot to where the eye is now it's going to start moving around and we have to do this like before the glue sets 
but I'm gonna try and get nice and close and over like to the center coming out to similar to where the the hole is that you put your safety eye in and then pulling that up making sure the eye is in the right place and then we just wrap it around the eye tucking it slightly underneath and then I'm gonna go in uh, probably about here and then I'm gonna come out a similar spot on the top of the other eye and then we're gonna kind of tuck it in behind this eyeball and not too tight but you want it to stick out a little bit and then we can adjust you know how much white is showing but we are going to try and place this a little bit closer here so we're coming out the same spot as the eye and then I'm going to go around the eye and back down here somewhere. And sometimes this takes a little while to get. I, I know I've like had to repeat this several times, but I found that if you just kind of like use your yarn needle to like pull it into the right spot, it kind of works out. Push and then pull. So, and the reason why we did it in this order is so I can kind of pull this one for like for the bottom of this one, I can pull this one. And for the bottom of this one, I can pull this one. So I'm just gonna mush this around until I'm happy with it um, because sometimes it looks a little bit odd. <laughs> Just because of the difference in the in the stitches sometimes it's a little bit weird so I'm gonna pull out a little bit more over here I think that's pretty close like you can add more white if you want or depending on the if you want the if you want the white lower here it'll look like it's looking upwards more and if you have the white up here more it'll look like it's looking downwards more so this is all up to preference you can just have a little bit poking up all the way around but I'd recommend not putting any white yarn on the inside here just on the outside just adds a little bit of zhuzh and then when you're done you can trim the excess and then Try not to give him a squish. <laughs> Let the glue set before you zhuzh. So I'm just gonna poke the whites in here. And then we are done. So you got these little flappy feet, which I think are adorable. And then you can position this little, uh, I was gonna call it a nose, but it's, I guess kind of a nose it's a beak and you can position it just like so so it's kind of tilted downwards so now you have your two very cute well I guess you don't have two I have two you got two very cute nope I just said it again I have two you have one but you can make as many as you want of these honestly these are kind of like a stash buster the body only has about 18 rounds and then the uh, beak has how many did we say six one two three four five six six rounds and then the feet are just like little chains so this is a pretty good stash buster I think it's super cute I don't know he's just <laughs> he's so silly looking it's so silly looking. So there you are, you did it. So hopefully if you've made it to this point, you have your own little chubby, cute kiwi. Um, hopefully you guys like this pattern. I really liked making it and um, it took me it took me a while to like get the pattern to where I like it into the shape that I like it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like, um, subscribe, comment, all of the YouTube things. It does help me and it does help me make more videos. And if you have a suggestion for something that you wanna see in the future, please let me know. I'm always happy to take suggestions but uh for now i will see you in the next one bye bye